Hey guys, I'm back for another video and welcome to another tutorial and in this one I'm gonna be teaching you guys how to record gameplay with OBS or open broadcast software So the first thing you're gonna have to do obviously is go and download it from the site right here open broadcaster software OBS project.com and you just download it for whatever your operating system is and it's a really straightforward installation you don't need any specifics for that so let's get straight to the program now I am recording using OBS so you're gonna get like a tunneling effect but here you go infinite loop yeah so I am recording using OBS right now you can see this little infinite loop in the <laughs> in the center of the screen here so what I'm gonna teach you how to do is how to make scenes and how to do your settings now the first thing I'm gonna do is show you the settings of course, you're going to want English and you're going to want to make a new setting profile. This one I'm using is called recording. You just got to type in the name and then click add and then there you go and select it. And we don't need any of these settings unless you want the cursor over projector or whatever. All right, so let's get to the important stuff like encoding. So what you're going to want to do is put these settings for optimal performance in 1080p HD. Now, if you do not want to record in 1080p HD. Actually, this is not 1080p HD. That is 1080p HD. Um, <laughs> if you want to record in a lower resolution like 720, I would recommend 5000 maximum bit rate and just set the uh, enable CBR padding and use custom buffer sizes disabled and use times 264 and use CBR. But if you're using Again, 720p, you should have 5,000 for your max bitrate, and if you're using 1080p, then have 15,000. And, of course, for audio, use AAC, 48, KHZ, 192 bitrate, and stereo audio. Unless you are using your microphone only, in that case, you should do mono, but I record gameplay, so, of course, I would want to um, do that. And I do not want to apply changes there because I don't know what just happened. Oh, it lowered the bitrate. Yeah. <clears throat> so, anyway, <laughs> now that it is set to 15,000 for 1080p, let's go over to broadcast settings. Um, if you're just recording and not streaming, which is actually what this program was made to do, then you're going to want to um, do file output only. And then put your path, of course. I put it in my raw recordings folder right here. And as you can see, it's making the file for this video right now, which is kind of weird. But yeah, so it is writing to that location right there. Do not change any of this. I do not know what that is. And I would um, recommend you don't touch it. So just leave this as it was when you first got it. Now for the video tab. Now again, if you're recording 720p HD, then you're going to want to downscale to um, your full resolution, which is whatever it is, to 19 or 1280 by 720. Now of course, I am again recording 1080p, so I'm not going to be downscaling. The reason why I didn't have that on in the first place was because I was playing a game that did not perform very well on my computer, although I have an i7 4770K and two GTX 760s. So it's really the game's fault at that point because I've got some pretty badass hardware. So the game wasn't running well enough. And if you're, if you really have to know, it's Advanced Warfare. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so I had to downscale it to 720p and have one third the bitrate just to get it so the game will run because that uses up 100% of your. Um, CPU usage and if you don't know OBS uses the CPU to record so if there's nothing left it obviously doesn't work very well so yeah that's that and of course 60 FPS right there and I wouldn't recommend disabling arrow unless you're really desperate for performance but it makes you look like Windows Classic mode and I really don't like that so um, every time you go through these tabs you have to click it apply or it will pop up with the thing before that you saw all right, audio, you really don't need to change much in here. Desktop audio default, microphone default, push to talk delay. You really don't need that because push to talk is kind of bad. Um, have a boost of one. Now, that doesn't need to change. But one thing that might need to change is your mic or AUX boost because sometimes microphones don't record very loud. So you're going to want to um, set that to a, I don't know, two is what I'm good with. But whatever seems to work best for you, you had to test out. 
and hotkeys. There's only one, and it's to start recording, and that's page down for me. Um, it's the most convenient for me, and I don't have one for stopping the recording because I don't want to accidentally press it when gaming because that would be kind of bad. <laughs> so there's that. And last but not least, we have the advanced. Now, these two other things I don't even use, so let's not even bother looking them over. So, in advanced, general, use multi-thread optimizations, of course, if you have multi-threading, um, if it's supported. Um, and then there's process priority. I would leave it at normal because if you set it, like, above high or idle, like, either of the two, because if you think about it, your games that you're recording also take up CPU, so if all of it's going towards the uh, OBS, then not enough of it would go towards the game and you get lag. So, and vice versa if you do the opposite, like what I said about Advanced Warfare. So, I would leave it at normal, and scene buffering time in milliseconds works best at 400 for me. And, whoops, I just did that. <laughs> I just clicked something. Disable encoding while previewing. That doesn't really change much because previewing is a, a little feature I'll show you later. Allow other modifiers on hotkeys. Again, I don't really know what that does. And here's the extremely important part right here. X264 CPU preset. Um, this might change depending upon what processor you have, but I seem to do best on very fast encoding profile main. Keyframe interval for the audio is, I think it's audio, is for 2 milliseconds. That is the best for me. Whoops and use CFR. I don't really remember what that does, but I <laughs> I have it there. And if you really want to get fancy with things, you can have custom 264 encoder settings, which might make your video quality better or performance better, but I generally don't use any because, I don't know, I just haven't seen them to be very useful. But you can go ahead and do that if you need to. And you don't need that, you know, because that would make it actually a lot slower. Um... I do not remember seeing that there, but I don't see any harm in putting it on, but I don't see any harm in not putting it on, so I'm going to leave it. <laughs> audio. So force desktop audio to use time video timestamps as the base for audio time. I don't know if that's useful or not either. A lot of these things I haven't seen before because OBS updated since I did my settings, but considering it still works perfectly right now, I would assume you don't really need any of these, but this is important too. Global audio sync offset 2 milliseconds. That will be the best one. And automatically automatic low latency mode. Again, this I have not seen before. <laughs> and it's only been like 2 months since I got this. So I don't know. A lot of updates. <laughs> That's a good thing about OBS. And of course these other two things don't matter. So that is that for settings. Finally. And again we have this infinite loop here. Now as you can see I've got what's called scenes. And you've got sources. Now, imagine this. I imagine these as folders. And in those folders are a bunch of these, which are little things that you record. So this is a folder. So gameplay plus webcam is a folder. So, for example, if I wanted to turn on my vignette that goes in front of my face cam, you see a little box appears in the top there. And um, over there, of course, because, yeah. <laughs> um... Let's see what else. You've got a face cam. Hello. And you could turn that on or off in real time while you're recording, obviously, because that's what's happening right now. And I am recording at 30 FPS right now, which is kind of odd considering I thought it was supposed to be 60, but whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll have to look into that. But 60 FPS is definitely recommended. I don't know why it's doing 30 right now. It's probably because I'm in the desktop. Yeah. So to add one of these scenes, you just got to right click, add scene, call it scene, I don't know, and there is nothing there. So as you can, <laughs> right now you see nothing because there is nothing in the scene. But what I would have to do is right click on it, which I'm pretty sure would go in a black screen again. Uh, let's do it for this one because you can see it. Um, oh, not add scene. We just did that. Oh, yeah. So it opens up a blank sources window. Then you go in the sources. You go... Right click add and depending upon what you're using whether it be an image or a monitor capture which is just capturing the whole monitor obviously you have window capture for like say chrome or something like that or um, an IDE for programming you have text which I haven't used video capture device uh, which is like a webcam device and then you have game capture 
which is the one that we are interested in right here. So game capture, game capture 2, I don't know. And it can detect Chrome. It works off of DirectX um, hooks, I'm pretty sure. But if I were to say open up Minecraft right now, that should be able to track it. There we go. Just going to move it out of the way. And, of course, I'm going to cancel this. And then do it again. Add. Game capture. Yes. Minecraft. And boom. As you can see, I can enable slash disable it appearing on the screen. So that is that. That's how you would do that. And as you can see, it's not full screen. What I could do is I could do... um. Uh, position or size fit the screen or not what <laughs> I think it might be like stretch the screen or something like that um no okay well that's weird <laughs> I think that's a setting in the um in the scene I don't know fit the screen should have worked though I'm pretty sure but anyway this is in 720p and I'm recording a 1080p video so just make sure that the resolutions match up but if I were to say take this and just go full screen then I'm pretty sure you should only see Minecraft right now which is kind of laggy considering that I'm recording full screen while recording Minecraft so let's get rid of that <laughs> so let's get rid of this game capture too I'm just gonna delete you so that is that and I'm also gonna delete the scene here that has nothing in it that you now can't see anything of because of that remove yes okay so that is really it now if you want a couple other things for recording with obs there is if you press alt i'm pretty sure you can change the size of certain things um again using the minecraft example i guess i already have an official thing for recording minecraft right there mc 1.8 play and then what i could do is not only can I record it, but I can change the size of the thingy. So first off, you have to go into Edit Scene. And I don't know if it'll let me do this while I'm recording. Yes, it will. And now it's recording full screen, of course. But what I could do is I could just be like... You can do that by just clicking on it. I'm pretty sure if you hold Alt... Um, it's hard to see. There we go. If you hold Alt, you can also do that make it get cut off there and if you hold shift you can do this you can um, be able to stretch it in any way you want that looks kind of funny <laughs> that looks very very strange oh my goodness okay so yeah and then of course you could just go here and then you could just be like position or size reset cropping and then I could go back and then I could do that again and reset size. And then I just got to do this. Whee! Oh, that did not reset it. Okay, hold on. Um, a lot of these things don't work while you're recording, which is kind of weird. Fit the screen. There you go. That set it back to the way it's supposed to be. And goodbye. So that is that. And of course, I just click on edit scene again to get rid of that red line. And that seems to be everything that you need to know to get going with open broadcaster software and one thing to note is that it works from top to bottom for example if i were to take this monitor capture put it all the way in the top and then i enable vignette that would not pop up because the um this would be on top of it so it goes in order of what's on top all the way down to what's on the bottom and yes you have to do this process for each and every game but once you do it you have it saved and you just gotta enable it whenever you're playing that game. And I have the privilege of having two monitors, so I can actually see OBS doing its thing on my second monitor the whole time while I'm recording. And of course, you should be recording with this on, like that. But of course, it causes a strange effect for me because I actually don't use OBS to record my microphone. I use Audacity. <laughs> so I have this is what it looks like on my second monitor basically all the time you just see OBS and Audacity right next to each other and I have the same hotkey to start recording with both of them so it's already lined up but yeah I only record the desktop audio which is everything except for my microphone basically so that is it for OBS as I already said so if you have any further questions just go in the comments down below and I will hopefully be able to answer it so that's about it 
So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys later.